Assassin's Creed Mirage puts the focus back on assassining, stealth, tactics, and using your gadgets to get the job done. From my time with it, there are some important things you'll want to know that'll separate the little Baber assassins from the Batman tier masters of subterfuge. I'll show you some special combat mechanics, upgrades and tools that can completely change the game, and a few things that Mirage doesn't just flat out tell you you can do. So let's just get into it. I'm Alex, and if you happen to be new to my channel, hey, hit subscribe for me. First, if you're pretty high up, but you're not within range for a normal assassination, you can actually use the new Assassin's Focus ability while plummeting in midair. You can use that to become a blur of kills along the way down, and avoid splatting with fall damage at the end of it. These big mace-wielding armored dudes can't be damaged from the front. You can try to hit them in the back, or just use the classic arrow-to-the-knee tactic. Using just a single throwing knife on their leg bits will knock them down and set them up for an insta-kill, so you no longer have to deal with their annoying armor shenanigans. You can also break their signal horn with a well-placed throw, but for the most part, just get them in the leg and neutralize them when they're down. If you watched my AC Valhalla guide back in the day, you might know that I love a good infinite use free torch, and there's all kinds of stuff you can do with the one in Mirage. You can use it to set enemies on fire from a distance and actually get them to move from their current location. Useful if you need to gain access to a place, but you don't want to completely slaughter everyone along the way, since there are sometimes optional mission objectives to not kill anyone. Or if you're a bit more aggro, use this free throwable fire source to engulf someone in flames to run them straight into your compassionate embrace. The smoke bomb has an upgrade you can get that will ignite it when thrown towards a fire source. If none are within proximity of your targets, just use your torch ahead of time to prime it for detonation when it lands. When your notoriety is high enough, these hard-to-kill elite units will be sent to find you. But if you manage to kill them instead of them you, that'll completely reset your notoriety level back to zero for free. If a straight-up fight isn't working for you, try the Choking Fumes upgrade for the Smoke Bomb. That can stun them for a bit and drain their health. Another option is to fully deplete their defense gauge above their health bar. The parry to kick move works well for draining that, and once the defense gauge is broken, you can insta-kill them regardless of their current health. Both your sword and dagger have a raw damage value and a defense damage value. So if you want to attack less and aim for more of a parry-focused playstyle, go for weapons with a higher defense damage stat. At the blacksmith, if you prefer the stats of a certain weapon but you're not into how it looks, you can slap a cosmetic skin of any of your other weapons right over it while maintaining its stats and upgrade level. Enemy attacks in red can't be parried. However, your sword and dagger have a hidden bonus, being able to interrupt if you land a heavy attack during the enemy's attack animation. Instead of having to dodge out of the way, just power through them with a well-timed heavy attack. By the way, you can also dodge cancel out of pretty much any of your attacks to lessen the ending lag of the animation. Theft. Find a busy intersection and turn on Eagle Vision. That'll automatically highlight the coin purses on anyone you can pickpocket. Turn these bustling traffic ways into little money-making factories for you, and this can also net you tokens that you can cash in to reduce the prices of certain vendors or to hire some temporary NPCs. There's two different coin purse rarities, either they'll be highlighted silver or gold, indicating the quality of loot they're carrying on them. There's also an upgrade in the skill tree that lets you sometimes insta-steal and gain more from pickpocketing. If you want to avoid the timing-based minigame entirely while pickpocketing, you can put the target to sleep ahead of time and easily then swipe their goods while they're unconscious. I was almost feeling bad for all these civilians you're always picking on, but then I realized how much they love to tattle on you. Guard! Alarm! Get that man! Bruh, I'm just standing here. The Assassin's Focus ability, you might assume at first it's just for setting up quick strings of kills. But it's also a really effective one-off warp attack that can quickly get you up to hard-to-reach spots. 
There's going to be a lot of heavily fortified areas you'll need to find a way into, and using Assassin's Focus on one of those wall guards is a super easy way to get right in there without all the hassle. The Trap Tool is a non-lethal proximity explo- No, wait, let me fix this. The Trap Tool is a ridiculously lethal proximity explosive capable of knocking down enemies. The knockdown effect of the trap has the added benefit of setting up most enemies for an easy skewer while they're mediocrely breakdancing. This, along with the smoke bomb, are your best options for quick disposal of multiple enemies. There's also an upgrade you can get for the trap that lets you remote detonate it by whistling. You can quick access the three tools listed here by pressing their corresponding button while you're aiming with any other tool. That gives you quick use of traps, noisemakers, or smoke bombs in case you need to pop one during a fight. These big sword-wielding armor dudes got smart and also covered their legs in armor, so that dagger to the knee trick from earlier won't work on them. But if you dodge around to their back and hit them with a single sleep dart, that will set them up for a quick insta-kill. The counter roll skill is useful for this, since that lets you dodge up and over someone while they're in the middle of an attack animation. The torch is coming in clutch again, which can set more things alight than you might initially assume. Pretty much, if it looks like it has straw or hay or whatever on it, it can probably catch fire. You can use well-placed arson to lure guards, set up traps, and create distractions you're going to be finding this red, dusty stuff all over the map in bags and containers. Striking these will pluff out a large cloud of smoke, just like the smoke bomb tool, but for free. That'll set enemies back up to be assassinated, while your elite allergy resistance powers right through that junk. These fire guys have a special exploitable weakness just like the armored enemies. If you hit the canister on their back, that will immediately trigger their rig to explode. The dagger I have equipped here slows down time after a parry, which makes for an easy opportunity to trigger that canister, melting their entire setup like a bad PC port. That's not a cheap jab at this though, because thankfully the PC version of Mirage is pretty solid. I had everything maxed out in 4K throughout this video, and it was constantly buttery smooth, even with all the distant architecture being drawn in and those NPCs running around. Although the map isn't anywhere as gargantuan as the last three Assassin's Creed maps, it's much more dense and doesn't really have padded travel time to get you around to the things you need to do. I was worried the new area was going to be too small, but it's not really. It just trims down the busy work and crams a lot into the space it uses. Alright, those were just a few of the things I've been playing around with that I thought you might want to know before heading into Assassin's Creed Mirage. Down in the comments or hit me up at BoomstickAlex on X with your thoughts on this departure back to the stealthy origins of Assassin's Creed. Do you prefer the sneaking, blending into crowds and all that, or do you prefer it to be more like a big open world action game? Let me know. Thanks for checking this out today, I'm Alex, and I'll see you soon in the next one.